Hi, my name is Keelan, and I have not posted on this channel in a very long time, but I thought that this video would be a good video introduction to kind of a new chapter in my life and a good documentary moment to document this. Today we're going to be talking about something that happened just a couple weeks ago in Florida, um, and this is my DKA and type 1 diabetes diagnosis story. DKA is diabetic ketoacidosis and um, type 1 diabetes. So first let's just start out with like what is type 1 diabetes? Well this is basically where my pancreas can't produce enough insulin. This happened in Florida. This happened in Clearwater, Florida. Um, we were there for a five-day vacation. So before I ever went to Florida a couple weeks ago, before I went to Florida I had extreme thirst and I had to pee all the time. So when I say extreme thirst, I mean like extreme thirst. Um, my dad is doing this challenge called 75 hard. And one of the things in the challenge is you have to drink, you have to drink a gallon of water every day. And so I decided that for one day I was gonna drink a gallon of water with him. And it was so easy. Like I drank that gallon of water without really any issues and um that's probably a little concerning honestly now that I think about it but um that was like not that hard for me to drink a gallon of water in that day so I mean I have never really drinking a gallon of water in a day not even close so that's pretty um interesting <laughs> Um, and I I would wake up like five times a night. That might be a little exaggerate. Like, I might be exaggerating a little bit on that one. But like honestly, there were some nights where I woke up like five times because I had to go to the bathroom. Um, and I'd wake up like early in the morning um, to go to the bathroom. This was noticed by my parents, but we really didn't think anything of it because it was kind of just like she has to pee a lot because she was drinking so much water, and she's just you know staying hydrated. Also, prior to this vacation, I was feeling very nauseous. I stayed home from school for a few days because I was feeling so nauseous, and I never actually ended up throwing up before this vacation, but it, I really felt like I had to for a very long time. On our way on that Monday, we went to Clearwater, Florida. We flew, and um, I remember on the plane, they give you those really, really good Delta cookies, you know? And so I was eating those, and I had drink in my mini water that they gave you, and so we ended, and I like, was so thirsty, I just, I needed water. But we didn't have any, so we ended up asking the flight attendant for more water, and they gave us more water, but, um... I remember like no one else had drinking all their water. But once we got there, um, a couple hours after we arrived, we were in a grocery store and I did not feel good at all. Um, I felt really nauseous, my stomach really hurt. So we went back to the hotel room and I kind of just sat in the hotel room for a couple hours and then I felt a bit better so we went out. But um, the next day I, started throwing up this was when I started you know really throwing up um I threw up a lot on to on that Tuesday and then I threw up all through Wednesday and um by the time Thursday came I was trying to throw up but nothing was coming out um I had nothing left in my body you know to throw up um so that's when we went to the hospital because at that point not only could I not throw up anything anymore um, my sides like right here um, my sides really 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 hurt um, I could not control my breathing I was breathing super heavy and super rapid and um, I couldn't control my breathing at all and basically what was happening is I believe my body was trying to get rid of the carbon dioxide in my body and so it was breathing really heavy because it was trying to get rid of that carbon dioxide. I could not stop my breathing no matter how hard I tried. My legs were shaking so bad and I couldn't stop my legs from shaking. 
um, I felt super dizzy, super weak, and I couldn't walk. So when um, we finally decided, like, we got to take you to the hospital, um, I just wanted to get better. My mom and grandma got me a wheelchair, and they wheeled me out of my hotel the hotel room down to our car our rental car um i really could not walk it was pretty hard for me to get out of the wheelchair um into the car but i got into the car and we drove to the closest er that we knew of this is super important because um i was so close to going into a coma so this is super important because we went to the first ER we knew like was the closest because if we would have actually gone to the Tampa um, Children's Hospital, um, which is the hospital I eventually ended up at, then I would have gone into a coma um, because I didn't have that much time left before I go went into a coma and the nurses told my mom that they say that she saved my life that day but I was so close to going into a coma if we would have waited another 20 minutes to even get to the hospital I would have been in a coma so uh, we went to the closest ER um, they wheelchaired me in and at this point I don't remember anything because I was so close to passing out um, I don't remember anything from the point where I got out of the car into another wheelchair. I don't remember anything from there, but I was talking to my mom about it and this is now from her perspective, perspective a little bit more, but they wheeled me in and while we, I was, they poked my finger, uh, to check my blood sugar and I, my blood sugar was so high that it wasn't. It went off it's off the blood sugar meter their blood sugar meter only went up to 500 <laughs> it only went up to 500 and I was at 693 for my blood sugar so they were like telling my mom uh, like her blood sugar is over 500 it doesn't test on our meter and she was like well what does that mean exactly right then and there they knew um i had type 1 diabetes because my blood sugar was so high and there's no way that my blood sugar could get that high um with my pancreas producing insulin correctly um so they told my mom right then and there that i had type 1 diabetes and um after that they tried to get an IV in me so this is the arm uh, I also had an IV in this arm but this arm they were trying to find like a vein they couldn't find a vein um they <laughs> the thing that they actually ended up pulling out of my arm um like the IV that they ended up pulling out was actually way longer and the nurse um who pulled it out of my arm she was surprised at how long it was because she really didn't know how long it was. She was like, wow, that's a really long uh, IV that they put in your arm. Um, here's what it looked like. Um, the I don't know if you can tell what was in my arm or not, but they couldn't find the vein in my arm because I was so dehydrated. Then they got me on it, um, um, fluids and insulin into my IVs and they once i was stabilized i was driven in an ambulance to tampa's st joseph's hospital children's hospital and um that is where i spent the next 30 ish hours in the icu they had to slowly bring down my blood sugar because bringing down my blood sugar too fast can cause swelling of the brain and it could have killed me or caused you know permanent brain damage they did say that um i might need to spend the next two to three days in there but um that didn't happen obviously the people that were with me then was my mom and my grandma um, my dad and my stepmom Ashley 
they were on a flight to Arizona for their vacation that they were gonna go on uh, for like the next four days, four or five days um, in Arizona. And so they were on a flight to Arizona. So we didn't, we couldn't like get contact. We couldn't get in contact with them because you can't call anyone on a flight. So they were on their way and once they landed, I FaceTimed my dad, and obviously I'd FaceTime him at the right time because he had just landed. And I FaceTimed him, I was pretty loopy, uh, just because I was, uh, my brain had a lot, it was pretty, I was pretty confused. Um, there was a lot of confusion just because that's what happened when I went into DKA. I got really confused, I couldn't remember things. Um, I was pretty loopy when I FaceTimed him. Then what happened is they immediately got onto a flight to Tampa from Arizona. So they flew from Minnesota to Arizona and then from Arizona to Tampa right away. The day that I was getting discharged, um, we got a super amazing educator um, and to help teach us about diabetes, um, what it is, what we need to do to help control it and this is a lifelong disease that there is no cure to type 1 diabetes so now it's just something that I will live with for the rest of my life. We flew back home on that Saturday so I got discharged on Friday and I came back on Saturday. I got a Dexcom really early into my diabetes which I think is awesome because who really wants to poke their finger like all the time? Uh, <laughs> And it's so much better because I've already had quite a few lows um, since I've been home. A Dexcom is a continuous glucose monitor. And what it does is it tests, it it can, I'm pretty sure, I'm not honestly, I, there's like a little tiny cannula that sticks underneath the um, skin and it just... It's like really tiny. Um, it just sticks underneath the skin and it tests my blood continuously. It just shows you your blood 24 seven. This is what it looks like. Um, yeah, that is my DKA and type one diabetes diagnosis story. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, kind of learning more about how this all happened and this is going to be kind of um, now a channel where I will also post about uh, type 1 diabetes. I think that I'm going to do kind of more videos on, you know, um, reviewing things, um, maybe changing out my Dexcom, um, and classes. We already finished classes for an insulin pump, and we sent out our insulin pump assessment worksheets. So now we just need to get approved and an order will be um, placed for an insulin pump. And the insulin pump that I am going to be trying out first is the Omnipod, which is the only tubeless insulin pump on the market right now. So I'm super excited about that. I think that it's going to be awesome. Um, that is all 